or you're going to bias your results. I'm going to show you the results of the experiment we have done a lot of. Okay, this is the other laboratory exercise. And what we've done is we've, we've given what I like to call the mystery liquids. They don't know what it is. They're usually dyed. Some of them are colored. Hint, hint. We, we give them swine manure. So we have to all color them dark, the same purple or whatever. Uh, and then they just, given the sample, this is the intensity, this is the offensiveness. There's, there's no dilution about it. They just sniff and tell us what they think. We've looked over the, the last 15 or so years, I've had folks smell tap water. And actually, they do have a response to tap water. Uh, cologne, you know, y'all just experienced cologne. Raw swine wastewater, Facultative Lagoon wastewater, they smell a lot of stuff. And there's Monica again. They do the sniff test pretty much the same way. We have a ballot, 0 to 6. Uh, the intensity scale, the exact same one y'all used. They use the intent, the offensive scale that Misselbrooks used. In other words, if it's a six, you know, knock the buzzard off the gut wagon. Can't imagine anything worse. What I really like about this experiment is you can use it to do a lot of stuff. Uh, Dr. Brown and Dr. Kaiser and Dr. Kumar, who've done this class, they've chosen to, to use this same experiment to show a lot of experimental error and that sort of stuff or variability and whatnot. This is one class of about 30 students. This is the response, the histogram of the response to the uh, intensity on the left and offensiveness on the right. And you, you see the, the skewer I see all the time. And I'm sure there is a, if you're a statistician, you'll tell me what kind of distribution that is. I call it the bison hump distribution. There seems to be a big, there's a lot of, uh, there, there's, a, there's a gathering of opinion toward one end and it falls off and then there, the, the sense kind of trails off the other end. It's like the bison hump. And then, because this is offensiveness, and since most people would think it's a pleasant, the zero is, there's a skew toward the, the left and you could do some mathematical transi transitions to make it a normal distribution. So I guess what I'm saying is it's not a very normal distribution. And maybe with the uh, panels, you would throw out some of those. This is the results from seven years, and I think there's 233 noses. Smell that? And it's almost the same distribution as the, as the 30. So, again, every year I do this. I mix up the swine manure, and I've been out to the farm. I've mixed up in the lab, and I've got odor fatigue, and I'm trying to smell this. It's not going to work this year. They're not going to smell that. They give me five every time. Oh. Swine manure, they give me five every time. Even I think they're not going to smell these. So it's the same kind of bison hump distribution, and you got it for both of the, the responses. The other thing we do in this particular exercise is we, we take the average of the intensity and the offensiveness, and then we plot the standard deviation so it's a nice star. And here in the Cologne, the average intensity was three and a half. This is that one class and one. And of course, Standard deviation goes below zero, but hey, that's math. This is the results of seven different years of doing it all. It's just like a, a good shot, shot a, a good marksman hits, hits that same spot. You know, and I'm just randomly doing the cologne. So there's a lot of error in here. Okay. One thing that we've done, and I don't want you to put too much store in this, and you're going to see in a second why maybe you might want to put too much store, it's very... Um, when I show, when, if I show this to the Department of Animal Science, he gets real excited, okay? What we did, we had our hog farm. We've taken smells at different points in our hog farm. They like to tell me, we spent a million dollars on that waste management system. Well, I'm going to show you how it works, okay? This is the actual uh, waste management, hand, the manure handling system. We actually have, we have these modular home for hogs, so we have, like, they're double L up in or triple L. We we have 57 pits and they all drain to a central sewer. They go to a splitter box. It gets a choice to go into our digester, the ASBR, or it goes to a covered anaerobic lagoon. Flows into an open aerobic lagoon or facultative lagoon. We recirculate. We do some subsoil irrigation. The first sample is the raw manure. Manure. This is from. I skipped one year in there. Actually, no, there's one extra year in there. This is the 
the distribution of 233 people smelling raw manures. Always up there in that upper right-hand corner. Intensity of four to five. Pretty darn offensive. Not almost knocked the guzzard, buzzard off the gut wagon offensive. The other thing I like to do is say this is the kind of the cloud of possibility. Actually, it's the 60 percentile possibility, right? Okay, since that's one standard deviation. The next thing they smell. Back when I was brave enough, I'd walk out on our cover, and we have some sample ports. I would dip the stuff, dip the effluent off the top, and I would they would smell that straight. And you can see that there, there's no overlap. In other words, because we went through that anaerobic treatment, it's less intense and it's less offensive. Okay, y'all buy that? You, you think okay, let's let's start laying applying covered lagoon effluent. It's going to reduce the intensity by one, you know, one log unit. What about the offensiveness? What did you just learn? That's probably wrong. If we diluted them to the same intensity, and I, I did some bubble diagrams if we really had a long time, you can see that a lot of people, when they do this thing, they say 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5. It kind of goes off in the, the northeast quadrant. So if we diluted these both to four, they would probably come closer together. You'd see a little overlap. But there would be definite, you know, you would say that there is definite treatment effect. Take it from our aerobic lagoon, and the aerators are basically for show. We've turned them on twice, but it does get good algal-type aerobic treatment. This is our results. We're definitely showing, at least by doing this little sniff test, that we've got good results. So we're all proud our $1.5 million has been to good use. Back in the old days, we had the smelliest hog farm in the state of Oklahoma. We actually did. It was one of these smelliest because we had pastured hogs right next to the highway. We had some old buildings. You, they, they couldn't even clean them. They were, they were nasty. But we had the best lagoon I have ever seen. We had this nice purple sulfur bacteria in there. This is their response. They actually thought the, an, the anaerobic or facultative lagoon with the sulfur purple bacteria smelled better or... They couldn't tell any difference. So all of that one and a half million dollars, we were doing just as good with the, the fact they were good. So you can do a lot of things with some real simple tests. So I guess what we hope we learned today was you can visualize odors. They have a structure, the odorants, the, the notes, the odorants, the, the odors. That we can measure them using those four parameters. And they're measurable. And then we can... There's all kinds of nifty things that cost absolutely nothing to do to, uh, to show these phenomena. I heard a lot of good conversations when, when I was tallying the votes about some people thought horses really smelled bad. That was good. And, and uh, if you've never worked with horses and cleaned out stalls and smelled horse urine, you don't know what you're talking about if you say horses smell good, right? That's some of the things. So anyway, there's a lot of opinions. Uh, but I hope this is one way we can try to, to talk to diverse groups. I have never, I, the one group I have never presented this to is an, ad, uh, uh, an adverse audience. I've never given it, we used to, in Arkansas we used to call them the againers. You know what that means? You're again, you're against something. Anything new, I'm against it. You know, so, so I've never presented to somebody who is anti-hogs or anti-cattle or anti. And uh, one of the problems we have and, and Larry, you can bear this out maybe, is no matter how well you treat it, and you say the offensiveness went from 5 to 4 or to 1, if they smell anything, it still reminds them, I hate that damn hell farm. So, uh, I think that's one of the things, the messages we need to give the, the farmers is, yeah, we can spend a lot of money and make your, you know, get it down from a 4 to a 5, but, or from a 4 to a 1, but, but you, there's, other, there's other cultural phenomena involved.